Hello, I'm Maurice Dimba and welcome to this tutorial today. We will be continuing with the, uh, with the standard cutting details of castellated beam sizes and the next size we are going to is 400 and 6 by 178 universal beam but castellated and we'll get started right away and we'll go straight to applications and component right here and we'll click on that and just type here uh, castellated castellated and we'll pick that just double click to access the the, uh, the 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 dialog box for the castellated beam so just drag this uh, somewhere there and uh, we define the positions where where we want our castellated beam to stretch and this is the, this is the the default that we'll try to modify to meet our cutting details for this particular size of castellated beam in this case it's 406 by 178 now i'll snap on this particular point and stretch all the way to that spot which is uh, 12 meters uh, standard high uh, standard length and i'll snap right there then i'll right click and and uh, right click right here and click interrupt just to terminate that command and uh, i'll double click once again and to just to bring it up slightly because it's uh, half it's up and half is below the grid line similar to half is up and half is down in uh, half is up and half is down in between the zero zero point now i'll come to position here and i'll come to uh, at depth so i'll try this this is the point that will help us in uh, shifting it up to a zero zero level or to the top of our grid line so i'll pick on front and uh, click modify and it will move right away up now this is the part that will customize to meet our cutting details of this particular size we just described now i'll double click on it to access this uh, dialog box for the castellated beam now I have the cutting details so I'll just feed them here and uh, in case you want them you'll be able to access and you'll be able to read all these and feed on your own uh, section uh, that you intend to uh, cut and prior to cutting at uh, cutting that you need to give up the, these details to workshop for uh, for the for the cutting purposes now we'll go straight and feed the details here and we'll have a preview of what we expect once it has been cut out at the workshop maybe by using plasma or laser cutter now i'll cap i'll start off by placing this one this distance and that distance and i'll go straight and feed that right there you can you can select everything and that point will feed will feed one or two one or two and uh this side the this side will feed will feed one or two here one oh two one zero two right there and the this end will feed uh, uh, one one seventeen millimeter and this side will just leave it at one fifty which is okay and uh this will define this will be the 406 or 406 we'll just type 406 here 406 and come all the way here and we'll, we'll, we'll define this we'll feed here this will make it uh, 609 609 and here we'll feed here 178 178 their flange with uh, that's it and the thickness will just leave it at that now i'll go ahead and click modify and we'll, we'll see what we expect now i'll go ahead and apply and accept that so if i double click on this i'll be able to see the same settings i've just fed in now these are the uh, cutting details for the for the for the four for four four hundred and six by one seventy eight universal beam but castellated so these are applicable if you intend to use and you can pick the details right here now 
I'll go ahead. Let me just redraw, just remove everything. Now, the next step is just to confirm our dimensions. And uh, I'll come to edit and uh, come to measure here and pick distance. And I want to confirm my, my measurements here. So I'll snap right there. That is 102, which is the uh, which is this one, 102. And uh, I'll come to measure and snap on top right there and stretch all the way down here and confirm that is 106. 106. And we want to check the flange width. So I can just bring that close and come to measure and pick that and snap on that spot and snap on that spot. And you can see that is 178. So our castellated beam has been customized to meet our development cutting detail so that when we submit the, when we submit this to to, to to the workshop for, for cutting, it will come out exactly what we described on uh, technical structures. And this is what to expect to be handed over to site guys for uh, for action and also at the workshop for fabrication purposes. Now, I want to check this distance, this distance and this and that distance. And I'll come here and snap on that spot and snap on that spot. That is three, 336, which is OK. And that's it. And this this end and this end should be the same with this part and this part. We need to uh, to we need to we, we need to check that. And this part is one or two or one hundred and two. So we need, we need just to confirm this so that we 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 should be sure what we are doing. That's one hundred and two, exactly that. And we want to change that. The color of this will come to uh, uh, color by class and pick on that. Modify apply and accept that. And uh, click OK. Zoom close and come to new and come to navigate and turn that around and now we want to cut it in the middle and we will use our previous our previous method of cutting this into two so that we actually show that this is uh, the welding line between the two cut out now i'll come to uh, at at any uh, at any position point option then snap on that spot and snap on that spot then i'll pick on that right click and come to copy and snap on that spot and stretch out all the way to the other end and uh, place another point here these are the point that will help us in uh, uh, cutting out the part that uh, will define the weld line in between the two castellated beam or develop development uh, details of the castellated beam now i'll come to uh, edit here and pick on pick on the polygon then uh, i'll start way from the bottom end here first of all i need to s select on that then snap here then uh, stretch all the way to the other end and bring this close and i'll s i'll snap there and move all the way to the midpoint of this and i'll snap right here zoom out and in and move all the way to this spot here and i'll snap right here come back to my initial spot and when you close the, pol the polygon here you'll, uh, you'll lose the part that you've you've defined and created a polygon or it it will look like that i'll right click and redraw so we remain with this single part or the the development the half de developed part of our castellated beam now i'll come here and turn this round like this so we need this part we need to we need two of this part but the other one should be uh, turned the other way around now i'll copy this up i'll copy that or i'll come to special copy here and come to linear and come to z axis considering the position of our of our z axis and i'm assuming our z axis pointing up so i'll copy this up by 500 so that it gets you get off the, the same position of the current one so i'll just type 500 here and click copy and that's it now i'll click ok and i'll click on empty screen and right click so that i can move it uh, away further so that i don't create so much obstruction when when doing uh, the rotation of this member 
let me just drag it up and place it somewhere there so that we create more space let me write uh, redraw now i select this one and prior to doing what uh, moving to the next step i'll come here and come to edit here i'll come to edit and pick plane work plane work, work plane tool and i'll snap right there i'll select it once again right click and come to spatial move and pick uh, rotate i'll pick rotate here and uh, i'll use this point and this point as my rotation line and uh, in instead of using the z-axis which is pointing up it will not rotate perfectly or in the exact position that i intended to rotate to so I'll, I'll select line option so i'll define the line in which this part will rotate about now i want to rotate it around about this line here now that is the rotation line so i'll go ahead and click move and that's it i'll check whether the, whatever we've done is right and exactly it's right now i'll select on this right uh, right click and come to move and pick on this i'll snap on that position and drag dr move out and target this far end here and join them together right click and click again on, on empty screen and right click and redraw now this is how it look it will look so that when we generate a drawing you'll see uh, the the connection points and the, these connection points are the point that will be welded together uh, prior to uh, fabrication and direction uh, 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 step now I'll uh, bring back my XYZ position to uh, bring uh, bring the XYZ to the default position so I'll just come here and pick it and uh, take it to uh, to the top of the grid now let me just close this and close this because it's some sort of obstruction they are offering to us which we don't intend to be there for us as as at this i mean at this moment now we want to weld this together or just to put a symbol of weld now i'll come here and pick on weld just type weld and i'll pick weld here and uh, weld that to that and give it time to process that information right away and when it's done you'll be able to see the green symbol of uh, a conical green symbol indicating that the world has been created perfectly so right click and redraw the moment you refresh you lose it so if you try to delete it and bring it back you'll get it back now if i double click on it you'll be you'll, you'll be prompted with the dialog box of the, uh, of the welding uh, of the of the welding this is the dialog box of the welding macro and this is how it looks i'll close this and redraw once again to remove those symbols of connection or i can cut out and welding symbols now this is how it will look and once again we'll take one part of this one we'll take one part of this copy that linear and we'll pick the the, the, the direction and we'll pick a y-axis we'll come to y-axis and feed it here we'll feed it on the y-axis and change that to zero we can move it a little bit further by by one diameter will be okay by meter will be okay and click okay click okay that and come to navigate and turn this round like that this is how it looks and this is exactly what we want to use and this is how it will look and can come to navigate and rotate this Thanks a lot for watching and let's meet on the next presentation. I'm Morris Dimba and if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and bye bye. Thank you.